All right, I'm coming to the final part here. I'm coming up, I'm counting over one, two, three, four, which is going to put me down where I started. I'm going to go back to, and my final stitch is going to go so it stays in the same format below the one where I started. So you kind of have to just itch that up a little bit and stick your needle right back behind it and pull. And that gives you the continuity of the direction of your stitches. So there we go, that's finished. So our next step here is again, we're going to untie the bow tie for the yellow. We're going to release the blue. And now we're going to lift the looms out of the base, like so. And the first thing that I want to do is just simply tie off my center piece, my center raffia streamers. And I'm going to do a nice little square knot as tight to the base as possible. Like so, and just give a nice little clip on this. Then I'm going to the tails for the center flower, thread my darning needle, and feed those tails down through to the back. Again, thread the darning needle and feed it down to the back. That way they disappear there. Again, I'll just take a simple tying off with the square knot. And I like to do this before I take that center loom off because if you don't and you pull on uh, this to tighten it up, you will actually pull on the petals and shorten it up and you don't want to distort your flower in the center. So do your tie-offs first, then you can remove that inner loom. And we're going to do the same thing with our outer tails where we darn the feet, uh, thread the needle feed the tail to the back. This one's already to the back, so we'll just pull it through. And again, tie off before you take it off of the loom, so as to keep the uh, length of the petals even. And then just push the flower right off the loom and there it is completed. Um, the reason why I just did the tie off, and you can actually come back and do put a little glue on the back just to hold those ends nice, and perhaps you want to put a little um, bar pin on for a corsage. A lot of times these are used as embellishments on straw bags and hats, and it's just very simple to finish it off that way and then attach them to um, your accessory, however, however you want to accessorize. Okay, so we've seen the circles. Now I'd like to show you how to string um, a square. And we're just going to do the small square for the sake of it. it's going to be fast and easy. We set, we set the small square into the base and um, I'm going to do this with raffia. We're, going, we're doing the same thing of tying off. This is the process that you'll do no matter what loom that you use. It's just what you need to do to anchor that um, your uh, string or yarn or raffia. Come up through the center, around through the, that center top post, down to the bottom one, and around the bottom post. Go over clockwise to the next one, diagonally come across to the peg just to the left. Right, left. right, left. And again, I'm a big one for turning this. It just seems to go faster and easier for me. Helps me know right where I am. I'm always going clockwise. I seem to never miss a peg this way. And everything stays down. Again, we're wrapping it fairly taut. Here's our last peg and we're bringing it down. 
So it's coming off the opposite side of our first peg. Again, same process. Release the first tail, cut the second one, tie this on with a simple little uh, bow tie. You saw how easy it was to just release that bow tie at the end. That's what you want to be able to do. You want to be able to, I mean, you don't want to fuss with a knot that's in there so tight that you can't get this off. Okay, then we're ready to do either one of our darning stitches for the center, either the center uh, dot or the little center circle going around. So finished off, you'll have it look, look like um, either that or that. All right, the next thing I want to show you is our final shape, and that would be the hexagon. The hexagon um, is actually what I used to do this. It's going to become a shawl, and you can see the hexagon shape. I've joined this with a simple single crochet, and that is just absolutely the most fun you could ever imagine. To do the hexagon, we're going to take, again, and place our template into the base, our loom. And if you'll notice on this particular one, because it has the sides, there's on points on this and there's a flat side on this. I tend to always loom the points first. And that seems to work really well in terms of keeping me in track and in order and going one right after the other. So again, we're stringing a loom in exactly the same way. A single overhand knot, notching it into the little notch that's in, in the bottom of the base of the base. <laughs> wind this around the top and come down, wind it around the bottom peg and move clockwise back and forth. And again, my method is turning, so I'm going to turn, and you can see how nicely this is coming on one right after the other. Basic, all of the um, looms are, th are uh, strung in exactly the same way, and we have the two different centers. The instructions that are included with the Hanaami um, loom system show several different ways and methods of doing other things um, more than what we'll probably be showing in this particular video. But this gives you a really good basic idea of start to finish how to create your flowers and enjoy the loom. So to, to um, I'm reminded that it's really important to be able to know how to put this away. So I'm going to have you put the base down. The next thing that's going to have come is the large uh, square face down into the uh, grooves that fit that it fits in. You're going to put your center post in the center. The hexagon is going to fit next. Then the small center square. Your large circle is going to go face up and then your medium one, and then the small one, and your darning needle, and your lid. There you go. Hanaami loom making stitched flowers.